All right, welcome back to the boys of 161st Street. This episode is all about two people. Again, another episode where we lumped it together because none of these guys on their own kind of would be enough to talk about. We would say, hey, this is Sessa. All right, that's been the boys of 161st Street. Goodbye. <laughs> Same with Luizga. So this is Sessa and Luizga. Let's talk about them. All right. How are we, boys? Doing, doing all right. Say it again. <laughs> I'll say it. All right, Murph's with a little episodes, we, tonight. Yeah, with, with these episodes, we kind of just record a ton at a time, and Murph is in a sassy mood right now. But you guys are getting this, and, uh, you know, the season's right around the corner. So we got a couple more of these. We are on our way to spring training by this time. Spring training's going to be a blast. I'm still wearing this shirt. I'm wearing it on February 25th when we're recording this and I'm going to be wearing it when I'm at spring training when you're listening to this the next day the day after that and the day after that they're gonna have to pull this thing off this is gonna be the good luck charm as and why we win a world series but today you got me Chandler and Murph as usual Damon is in a ditch nobody cares where he is don't ask don't tell that's what I always say but let's talk about these boys so Luis Sessa and Jonathan Lewiska. We lumped these two guys together because I think they have a very, again, a very similar role just as, you know, Dietrich Ford and Jay Bruce had. So I think they're, I don't, I don't know that they're necessarily competing for a job because it, it's, you know, pitchers aren't really, I mean, they are competing for sure for innings and being the more relied upon guy, but it's not, not as much as like Jay Bruce and company were competing because one will make it in that group and the other will be in the minors. So like these these two are both going to be on the roster and they'll both be getting active work because again, everybody on the Yankees starters wise that at least that we've we've seen in the past couple of years, I know we have a bunch of new faces now, but a lot of them tend to not go very long. So relievers are really useful. And, and that's what we've seen out of guys like Sessa and Luazga. They get a lot of work in those games that, you know, pitchers go three innings. Tanaka goes four. Montgomery goes three. Like those kind of days are where Sessa and Luazga really end up getting a ton of work and, and are borderline starters at that point. So what are you guys opening thoughts on Sessa and Luazga? I think they fill that same role, the same exact role as each other. They're innings eaters. That's pretty much what they are. I expect them to come in when it's a blowout. We're getting our ass kicked or the bullpen's just spent and we need somebody to get us through, um, you know, get us through a game, get us through a weekend. Uh, it's kind of, you know, just like a dog days of summer. Everybody's tired. Throw out Sessa. Uh, whenever I see Sessa take the mound, my immediate thought is that we're punting the game or we're already getting blown out, or if we're winning by a lot, apparently we want to make the game closer. Um, but, yeah, that's pretty much just my snapshot of them. Murph? Yeah, no, I, I not to reiterate everything you just said, because except for the Sessa punting the game thing, no, they they fill that same role, but they also kind of prove their value in that sense. Like you said, I mean, you didn't see it as much last year because it was only 60 games, but when you play a full-length season, you get into July and August – you know, maybe you have a knickknack injury. Somebody gets a blister on their finger in the bullpen or something, or somebody gets shelled, you know, whatever. Down the stretch, you kind of want those guys to actually eat those innings. So that's what their job is. They don't really expect any more or less of them. If they can throw, have a four ERA and eat up the innings, then great. I'm interested about something, actually, and that's kind of what Sessa's role is going forward. Uh, Murph, I know you'd know better about this than me because you actually like Sessa. From what I understand, but he's out of minor league options, isn't he? I don't know any more about that than you would, but I feel like he probably is just because I feel like he might have gotten sent down at some point. I think he's out of options. I'm like 94. I feel like probably is out of options. Well, that's not necessarily 
the case. I think I mean, he actually is that option, so you're right in this sense. But like, that's not just because he's 28. I mean, oh, yeah, he like, never gets yeah, down. Think about like he's 28. He's been up and down so much in those years. Like, probably no, he has been. This guy has been moved up and down like it's his job. So I'm sure I, yeah, I thought like he would have options before. But this is a big like, year so for like him. If, if he doesn't prove oh it, God. I mean, he's fucking. He's done. Like he can't be sent down anymore. He's got this is a bigger year for him than the wise guy, even if they're both filling just a, you know, a show me role or a whatever role just to get out of games. It, if if Sessa, excuse me, doesn't produce, he's gone. And for me, thank God. Good riddance. Don't let the fucking door hit you on the ass on the way out. And yeah, I, I hate Sessa. So, so Why, it, wait, let's unpack that a little bit. Why do you hate Sessa so much? I feel like every time Sess is in the game, I don't know. I don't know. I feel the same way about Sess the same way you do about Gary Sanchez. I just, I don't like, it, it might be completely irrational. I just think he's been the worst pitcher on that team for like four years now. Every time he comes in the game, I'm, I, I'm sad. If we have a lead, I'm concerned about the lead. And if we're getting blown out, I'm like, Jesus Christ, this game's going to be five because I have to watch Sess get shot. For two innings, that's his role, though. Can't get mad at you. Somebody's got to stop the bleeding definitely. or just take the hit. And I think yeah, Sess I mean, is that Sess is the, the bathtub plug. You just you yeah, just, he's like just put in there to try. Yeah, and, the guy, he yeah, doesn't yeah, stop the bleeding though. He stabs the already dead body. Somebody's Somebody. ERA is going to take a hit, and and honestly, I, so I commend Sessa for being that guy. I commend Sessa for being that guy because yeah, I mean, coach says go out there that like, you're you're going to get fucking. You're gonna get shelled, but you're gonna you're gonna do you got you're gonna be that guy to like just maybe the other team will get tired and then they'll stop hitting you like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's you that's know how hard it must doing. be to come in in that situation because regardless of how good the pitching staff is, Cole can get bumped. Team's gonna have a hot bat. That's why whoever gets bumped out of the game. So you have a team that has a hot bat and they're confident because they're put up six runs and then you got to go in and shut that down. If he was, would come in and shut that down and have a two ERA, he would not be in that role. Yeah. So I think he does his role just fine. I, yeah, I'm on your team. I'm not team Sessa. I'm kind of the middle ground between you two. So I feel it's actually nice that I'm in the middle of the screen. not my favorite player in the bullpen. I know. I know. No no one, no one's Sessa is not on anybody's top list on the (laughs) trust tree, but I do agree. Like Sessa is kind of, like by design thrown into bad situations because he he like I said before comes in when the innings have gone to shit kind of the starter got pulled early same with Loizaga so like these guys are very similar in that sense Loizaga is interesting we'll get into him a little bit actually after I, we finish up on Sessa but Sessa he, he like I said by design gets kind of gets kind of fucked like you, I mean, you throw him into a high leverage situation because he's coming in to do a little bit of like mop up duty, and then, like you said, I didn't even take that into consideration too. The team is that's hitting against him is super confident because they just bumped out the fucking starting pitcher or the pitcher before him. So it's not like you're coming in in a clean inning number one, and you're not coming into a team that's like down and out because like he he's never coming in to follow up Garrett Cole. Like I, that's my over under over under okay. Luis Sessa. Entries into the game following Garrett Cole because Garrett Cole usually is going to go at least seven, and Sess is not coming in at a seven unless if it's a he, blowout. Unless it's a blowout, or if he gets like, if he's if it's mid August and he's chucking like a, a one four, maybe they bring him in. But other than that, yeah. So uh, let me ask oh, you that. Oh, let me, wait, let me follow you up on that Sessa. over under, over under three and a half times that Sess follows Cole. No, that's too high. Over under one and a half. Over under one and a half that Sessa follows Cole out of the pen. I'll say over just because of the blowout scenario that you were saying. That's where why I kind of put it at three and a half. But then I, up six, nothing. Who else are you going to bring in? Maybe Loisaga. To Loisaga or Sessa. I don't know. Green could fill that role too, but Green's a, like a better, better arm. You're in a you're in a weekend series, and it's the Friday, and you're blowing them out. You're not going to waste Green. I would take the under. I would I would take the over, but and it's just kind of what Murphy's saying. You know, if you're blowing somebody out on a weekend series uh, again, it's a long fucking season. So, uh, but uh, now, I, I'd like to put another over under on how many runs the team scores after that. <laughs> I think if he comes Not in and 
Yeah, if he comes in in an eight zero game and Cole's just thrown seven brilliant innings, the game's going to probably end eight six. Which you know what? It's still a win, but why did I have to watch Sessa fucking blow for two more hours? You know, it's Friday night. I'm trying to get my Yankees fixed. I'm already happy. I don't need to be miserable for two hours when I already had the first seven innings of happiness. I don't think he's that bad. He's not that bad. You're pumping the gas a little bit too much. Like, I think I think the one we should be more worried about, and I think we should spend more time like shitting on is Luizga to me. I Luizga, disagree. Luizga, 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 I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Hold on, Murph. I think Luizga we should shit on a little more is because Sessa, I don't have as much expectations for because the stuff isn't like the stuff. Sessa looks like just like an average Joe who got a job and – he he's like, hey, I could throw some baseballs, and he throws some baseballs, and he doesn't he doesn't say he's gonna do amazing things, and his stuff doesn't like entice you to believe that he's gonna be like, oh my god, this guy's got crazy stuff, like he's gonna be in the next big thing on the Yankees. Luizaga has this stuff, but he just fucking can't put it together, and I feel like we've been saying that with Luizaga for so long. It's like, when is he gonna ha- find the control? When is he not going to just self-implode on the mound? How many times have we seen Jonathan Loisaga just not even let the people touch the ball because, and that's not a good thing. Like not, it's not saying like he's blown by them and striking them out. It's because he can't. How many four-pitch walks has Loisaga done in his life? I'm going to throw the number on the screen when we when we have the research <laughs> to back it up, but it's definitely more than one and it's 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 a lot. And I don't enjoy that. I think that's why I don't like Luizga at all is because he just like that's the worst thing in baseball. The worst thing in baseball is not even letting your fielders try and like like maybe they'll hit a home run and that's worse than a walk, but like it's not because you gave them a chance you left it up to chance, and that, the chance of them hitting a home run is like I don't know, really low. And the chance of them getting on base when you walk them is one hundred percent. So like you're not even giving yourself a chance to to get the out. You know what I mean? That's the worst thing in baseball. That's what coaches told us in modified and little league baseball. Is like just you got fielders behind you. Somebody yeah. used to tell that to Luis ago. Okay, there was a time. <laughs> <laughs> where I legitimately thought that Loisaga was going to follow pretty much the exact same path as Sevy just a couple of years behind. Because when Sevy came up in 20, I think 16 was the first year, he got shelled, sent back down. Whenever he, he was 20, 20, 22, 23 at the time, Loisaga also came up that early, got shelled, got sent back down. He just didn't really come back with the same vengeance that Sevy did. But that just shows what he can do and like the expectations that you can have for him. Cause he has the stuff, like you said, where Sessa doesn't. So while I'd be less surprised if Sessa had a good year than Luizaga, I'd be a lot more happy if Luizaga had some incredible breakout year and kind of got the train back on the tracks. Listen, Luizaga is only 26. Like, I was going to look up his age. <laughs> 20, he's, he's, he's 26. He's got the stuff. I just I feel so much more confident with him. Even like even in a high leverage spot, I don't want him there. But if he's there, you know, there's a part of me that's like, okay, it, he at least has the stuff to get out of it. Like Sessa, if Sessa comes in in a high leverage situation for whatever reason, I my immediate thought is fuck. Like that's it. There's no depth to it. It's just like, oh god, here we go again. At first, it's like, oh shit, that sucks. That you know, all of our other guys are tired or hurt. But you know what? I'm I'm gonna stay positive with Luizaga just because you know I could be like, okay, well, he has the stuff to strike out anybody in baseball, so maybe he'll have it tonight. It's not a matter of you know trusting one over the other more. It's the just raw ability. He can do it. Whereas Ses, I mean, Sessa's actually got a decent curveball to his credit. I'm not going to lie. As much as I hate the guy, and he's not as bad as I as I say, he's he's good at his role. But I still, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna stand my ground. I hate the guy, but uh, you know, like I said, Loisic is just nasty, and I I have faith that he can get out of it. Not necessarily that he will, but he has the stuff to do it. You said he has a good curveball. He uses his curveball 1.9 percent of the time. <laughs> 
He's probably Sessa? throwing like three, yeah. He's probably throwing like three curveballs. You might be talking about his slider. Maybe his slider. Whatever. His slider he uses. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Fifty-four percent of the time. He has. All right, Dick. You know what I meant. Good slider. It, the batting average against the slider is one eighty, and then his four seam goes up to two fifty. But then, like, he should just stop throwing his sinker because <laughs> because it, it ain't working, champ. He doesn't really throw it too often. He throws it fourteen percent of the time. But like, let's get that number down to like zero. Because he gives his a 375 batting average against on his sinker. And that ain't it. But he does have a good slider. He throws it. And that's his main pitch. It's interesting. I like looking at the, the pitch mix uh, when, when looking at these players. Because, I mean, we learn it a lot when we do MLB The Show. And we're like, oh, like, that's when you really fu- Like, watching a game is kind of tough to see, like, the pitch mix. Like, you have David Cohen being like, oh, yeah, it's a nice slider. You'd probably, I'd probably go slider away or in the dirt right now. And they kind of know the pitch mix because it's their job to do that. But it's it's fun to look at these pitch mixes and see like actually what they use. So like his slider is pretty good, and he, his slider has a one eighty batting average against, and that's why he uses it. And that's, that's he throws that, it fifty five cool. percent of the time. Yeah, and that's that's nice because he obviously knows it's his best pitch too, and it shows by the numbers, and that's that's just cool to me. Luizaga, on the other hand, as is his fastball is his best pitch, and that's used forty two percent of the time. And the other, he has three other pitches that are kind of used the same amount. It's like this: the sinker, curveball, and changeup are all kind of used around fifteen to twenty percent. But one thing I wanted to point out between the two, a lot of their numbers, like the per nines, are very similar. And that's it's uh, the more I we talk about these two, the more I like that we lump them together because they're pretty much in in a very similar spot and have similar numbers. Not the same stuff, but they do have similar numbers. Their whip is about the same, 1.2 versus 1.4 for uh, Sessa being the 1.4. No, I mean, Loazia being the 1.4, which is not not good. They definitely give up hits and and walks. And the one thing that I will point out, and th- we've we've noticed this too, this passes the eye test and the nerd test, is the walks per nine for Sessa is 2.7, and the walks per nine for Loazia is four. Like, yeah, that's just not going to cut it. And it's just, it's not, it's not fun. It's not, and I, I really think that that, what, what I think is easier to teach is control, obviously, and stuff can't be taught. Stuff can a little bit be taught, but like really not. It's much harder to teach stuff than it is command and control because you can take, again, take some off, like just take a little bit off, just work on it. He's a young guy too. He's 26. He's going into his age 26 season. So I, the more I look at this stuff, the more I think I'm not fully out on Luizga having this maybe not super high potential, but he can certainly be a very good player on this team for a pretty good amount of time. Why not? If he can figure out the command, like if he gets those walks per nine numbers down a little bit, like, I mean, in, in 2020, he had 2.7 walk per nine. Obviously, a short season. He didn't have. He actually had a pretty good fucking year last year, from what I can see. And the other number is like 2019. He had four and a half, and then 4.4 is his first year in 2018. So I don't know. I I just think the only thing for him is if he can get the walk numbers down. I think a lot of things fall into place. Sessa, not as much for me. Sessa just kind of is what he is. He's out of options. I mean, he's he's out of options for a reason. You know, like. You're, if you got crazy good stuff and you got it all figured out, you're not going to get sent down. So that says enough on its own. Uh, granted, I, th- I think they both have very impactful roles with this team, and that's not to be discredited. But I, I, I have more more faith in Loisiga this year and, and beyond. I would love to see Loisiga in a one inning role, but there's I mean there's no room for him to start on this team right now, and he he's a good any or. Yeah, innings eater, whatever. I'd like to see him kind of in that one inning role where you can get away with the walks if you have the stuff. Obviously, what he does now doesn't work for you know an extended period. I'd love to see a year of him as like a six man, like in in an Ottavino role. You know, just come in for one inning, try and shut down the door. Um, if you walk some, give him a clean slate. You brought up a good walk because he can't find the fucking zone either. <laughs> exactly. Was, exactly. That's what I'm saying. You know, he's got the good stuff. Uh, give him a clean slate. Maybe he walks a guy. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he walks two. But, 
you know, at the end of the day, he can get out of it. And I think, I think if you give him one inning rather than try and stretch him, I think he could actually be good. Like a- an actual force rather than just like, Oh shit, there's another bullpen guy. I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit against what both of you just said. And I'm going to kind of play <laughs> as advocate right now. Um, I think that, Short term for this year. Oh, I just hit the mic. No good. <laughs> um, yeah, no. Short term for this year. I think Sessa just the control factor for Loisaga. It's not going to be night and day. It's not going to all of a sudden stop walking people. And I think Sessa, with how good his slider is, and that's if he throws a slider fifty five percent of the time, and he only walks two per nine, two and a half per nine, and Loisaga can't find it with a primary fastball. All Sess has got to do is develop another pitch that's in th- that'll start working for him. And once he's not so one dimensional, I think he's going to be a little bit better. So if he can find the sinker, he just started throwing the sinker two years ago. If he can find the sinker, figure the fastball back out, something like that, then I think he's, you know, he's not going to throw for a two ERA, but he could not be as terrible as Chandler so eloquently puts it. Murph, you uh <laughs> you if we did like a trivia night just on Sessa alone, you like it's no joke that you like you know your Sessa. He literally started throwing that sinker something. two years ago. I yeah, he's been implementing it more and more each year. That's actually I I, I, I commend I you on that. I don't I didn't just know that. I, I saw it on some somebody put it. I forget I lost it now. But okay well I mean you should I didn't just know that off the top of my head. I would have been impressed if you did, but in Stripe Valley, that's who it was. Well, it's on your new favorite website that you just found out the other day, Baseball Savant. So, yeah, they probably took it right off that. Yeah, it's right here. <laughs> he, he did. He started throwing it in 2018, and then since then, it went from zero to 7.4 percent to 14.2 percent. So he's he's. I wouldn't be shocked if he takes another step and starts throwing it. Like maybe my over under for this is over under sinker usage being like 35 percent, like take that no. take that jump guy i feel like he'd get that up to 25 but he brings that up the four seems gonna go down under 20 you think the slider stays at 54 or under 15 it has to no i actually do think he might take the slider down a little bit because here's the problem <laughs> with guys that throw the slider it's think about avino he couldn't you either can't find the zone or people are going to pick up on it and that completely depends on how good your slider actually is so I feel like you're only a good slider pitcher if you have another pitch that can complement it, which right now he doesn't have, which is why he's not considered <laughs> a good pitcher. Like, yeah, he throws a fastball. It's not that great. He, get, he gets his outs on the slider. What does he so, throw his fastball? Like 93? Really, another, I'm just learn, I've, I've seen baseballs on for a while, but I'm, I'm looking into the nuances of it. A cool thing to look at that tells you like the whiff percentage and the put away percentage on the pitches so the put away Murph right in line. You're right on the money again. His put away pitch is absolutely the slider, but like his put away percentage on slider is 21.3 percent, and the whiff percentage is 35.1 percent, which is pretty fucking good. The four seam fastball has a five percent whiff percentage, so he's not getting that by many people. I mean, it's sitting at 93 miles per hour, so it's kind of right in the wheelhouse of average. There's no MLB. way. It- like it's probably got. He's a righty, so it probably has no tail. It's just like. It's probably yeah, the be flattest like- thing ever. And you know what? Another cool thing, not to nerd out too much about the numbers, but like looking at the pitch mix, it's cool seeing how those numbers translate to the pitch usage because his forcing fastball went from 2016, whatever that's, I don't know. It was 2017, 41.8% is his usage. Then it goes to 41.1 and then 34. And then last year it was 16.9. Yeah, it dropped off the table. He I love how we're it. doing this. I love how we're doing this for Sessa, and we did episodes about Chad Green and Montgomery and all that. We left that. all that we didn't out. Figure and now this out. We'll, we'll bring this back Sessa. up for Chapman and, and Sessa's all, all the, the actual golden good ticket relievers. to the advanced metrics. Well, we still have uh, Britain and uh, Chapman that we haven't recorded yet, so we'll have that in the tank for those. But I, I just thought that was interesting. And Luizga, his put away pitch is the changeup. Oh, change oh, really. Well, I mean, there he actually kind of evenly distributed it for his put away. His whiff percentage on the changeup is forty percent, pretty good, and forty two on the curve. See, he's got. I mean, the, the batting average against is, oh, it's it's interesting. It's he's because he's got such a life like a lively fastball that if you when he throws the changeup, it that messes with you because when you go in in at bat against Loisiga, you're looking for that fastball, especially because he throws it 
50 percent of the time so when he does throw the change up not very often but when he does throw it you're it's not, not hitting that strike zone so you can't yeah. hit it yeah <laughs> i actually wanted to look up one more it's thing. hard to hit the ball if it's not in the strike zone yeah, yeah, that's well, true too. I mean, maybe that could be like Sessa and throw it in the strike zone and have it hit to fucking New Hampshire. But yeah, that's why I wanted to bring up another thing too. His, his like the sabermetric stats on him. Not this is like a sabermetric spot about these guys. Who would have thought we would dive into the sabermetrics on <laughs> Sessa and <laughs> and Jonathan Loazuga? But his hard hit percentage and exit velo are in the ninety fifth percentile for both of them, being unbelievable. And I think that's because he just doesn't put it in the zone. So the percentage <laughs> of balls that are hard hit or exit oh, I thought you said they were both. Like I thought you said Sessa and no ninety five being good in the ninety fifth. I was going to say there's no way Sessa's in the ninety. No, no, no. Sessa is in thirty eighth and exit velo and nineteenth in hard hit percentage. He gets yeah, knocked around. All right. <laughs> he gets. No- I mean that that passes with Chandler's with Chandler's things too. So I just wanted to look up like Garrett Cole just to compare the two because those two are probably very similar being Sessa and Loazio, not Garrett Cole. But I wanted to see like what a, what a real guy kind of compares to. Yeah, when, like when they're very different up. pitchers. A real guy. They're very different pitchers like at bat by at bat and they're very different styles, but they also do fill the same need, which is basically they're a long reliever that can – theoretically fill in just an inning role or be a spot starter if we need a bullpen day. Because I'd be probably more comfortable with the Wisega starting a bullpen day, but I wouldn't be that upset if Sessa I mean, started. I'd be confident in Sessa starting a bullpen day if I wanted to play from behind. Like, see if we can rally the troops. Maybe, you know, we're kind of slacking, lazy in the dugout. Let's toss Sess out there for a bullpen day. Let's see if we can get a quick 5-0 hole. Kind of... <laughs> Yeah. Let's see if they have the heart. I just was looking. You think up. either of them start a game? What? Yeah, I, I, bet, game? I bet both of them do at some point. Yeah, it's a long season. I think. I mean, they like doing Chad for those, but like, I feel like yeah, Chad's like, usually... the, Chad's like the one, maybe two in a game, and then it goes to one of them for three or four. I could see like a Lawizaga Montgomery piggyback Domingo, situation. Too. Yeah. If, if Domingo oh, stops Domingo, being a bad yeah. guy, Domingo is probably like a, a prime candidate for the piggyback role. Yep. Um, I was just trying to think back, just to end this episode off. There's one thing that is perfectly just like ingrained in my brain when you think of Lawizaga. It's against the Astros, and he had a fucking botch of a of a of a time i feel like it was nope that was against the indians he had a 27 era 20. against the indians in 2020 i remember him against the red Sox oh, last Lord. year nine whip in five batters face 54 walks per nine that's that's the one <laughs> that's yeah. that's the one <laughs> i'm trying to see the actual numbers to see the walks yeah, he had two walks and a hit in one out. Yeah, he came in, walked, to, walked two, gave up a hit, and got and got cranked. Not what you want, and and that's why no. I I don't know if I like him in leverage spots like that. All, all I oh, remember. I don't like him there. I'm just saying that's something that maybe, maybe in though. the future, possibly if you explored him in a one inning role, maybe he has the stuff to pull it off. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Lucky Good for us, we, we did kind of load up exactly. and get the guys like like legends like Darren O'Day and oh. I, Justin Wilson, who I, I'm not super high on, but he, he's he's a guy who he's can good. get some innings. He's, no, he's definitely not bad. He's better than Luiza and Sessa, but he's certainly not like a, a wow, like look at that guy. But oh he, yeah, it's not like Liam Hendricks. He's like a like, older type for me. Yeah, I'd rather have those guys in in a higher leverage situation. Like, but I'm just saying, guys, we might find ourselves in a situation where Sessa and the Wise are in are in a pretty high leverage situation, especially during the regular season. Maybe not in the in the postseason, but again, who knows? Pitch counts get high in the postseason. And these guys could find their way into it. But that's okay, gonna do it for not. me. That was actually a lot more. Again, we always say we're going to keep these <laughs> to 15 minutes, but we just, I guess we like the Yankees a lot. So go figure, start a podcast. Uh, that's going to do it from us. These episodes are always going to be on YouTube, always going to be on the Patreon. Like I said, every episode, we are recording them live in the Patreon. During the season, it's going to be a lot of fun. 
right as soon as the game's over is when we record on Monday nights and Thursday nights. And then we put the episode live out to you guys and the public. Be a friend. Join the Patreon. It's a lot of fun. You get a lot of other cool stuff. We're big trivia guys, too. I know Murph loves Sessa trivia, but he also likes real trivia. He's the, he's the historian on the podcast. So we'll be doing trivia live. A lot of live stuff. We upgraded our equipment. It works. Didn't work before. Yeah. So <laughs> we have the means to put out content, and we are definitely going to do it. And yeah, give us a five star rating if you like us. If you don't, sorry, but like, still give us a five star rating. That'll do it from me. See you guys later. Let's go, Yankees. All the guys at 161st Street, I just have two words for you. See ya.